Good. And um, so, Chef Robert, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I'll move behind the curtains and let yeah. you jump into this. Awesome. So, uh, you know, I've been in the hospitality field for the last 35 years, last 12 years in, 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 um, in uh, health care. In the last two years, I've had my own business, foodsafetychef.com, www.foodsafetychef.com. My email is jeffrobert at foodsafetychef.com. I've been doing consulting. I'm doing food safety training, alcohol awareness, allergen certification. All of that is what I'm doing now. Uh, and I also am contract with, you know, several different, you know, properties to kind of help them out through rough patches, that sort of thing. Anyway, that's what I do. Okay, awesome. Well, let's jump right into this. And yeah. again, folks, type in your Q&A as Chef Robert is presenting. I'll try to monitor that. And, and um, Chef, yeah, here, I'm going to yeah. put myself behind the, the curtain. But um, Chef Robert, I'm going to... Um, uh, if a question comes up that's relevant to something that you just said, I'm going to probably jump in when you pause and, uh, yeah, and share do. that with you. Excellent. Yeah, please do. Um, let me ask you, can, can you see me? Can you see my face? Can you? I can. Can you see me? You can. Can everybody else see me too? Yep, they can too. Yep. Okay, okay that's fine. I, I can't. I can't. I imagine it's on the top right corner. That's fine. Um, let me know when you're ready for me, Steve. Go. You, you jump on in, buddy. Excellent. You know, there's still a couple more people kind of filtering in, people from California. Um, <laughs> they're kind of jumping in, too, but they're waking up early because it's 9 o'clock over there. Okay, let me tell you who contacted me about this. I have someone from the government of Costa Rica that is joining in today. Steve, we are going international. I also have someone from the country of China, from Singapore, that's joining in today. How awesome is that? Uh, Greg from the Pineapple Academy. All my CDMs, I can see you. Put up the thumb if you're a certified dietary manager. I know a lot of us are gonna start reopening up our properties and this is all good information. I got a shout out to Dale. I got a shout out to Chef Christopher, Chef Chip. Wait a second, Chip, Chip. I got Chip and Dale, ladies. Chip and Dale's in the house. Uh, I see a couple ESQ. I see a couple of uh, attorneys out there. Uh, we're glad you're here. A number of DOS, the uh, Director of Nursing, Healthcare Agencies. We love you. We love your referrals, right? I see Chuck. I see me and Kathleen Chelsea. Awesome. How awesome it is that you're here today. Thank you for being here. Um, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Hey, uh, hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. See? I was going to say. Uh, I, I, you're always so much fun to watch, but I was going to say the, uh, the background music was, uh, um, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but, uh, but we heard uh, you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Steve. Um, so I'll be with you for about a half an hour. You know, we're going to go over the first part of this lecture. We're going to go over with what the CDC, the, the, uh, FDA, the Department of Health and Human Services, OSHA, um, the USDA, we're going to talk about everything that they're saying. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that we know already. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll put some, you know, tools in your toolbox that will help you out. I, um, uh, and then, then the second part, you know, we'll kind of roll up our sleeves and dig into it a little bit. Um, uh, just, you know, if you guys behave, you know, I'll keep Chuck on mute. If you misbehave, I'm going to take Chuck off, okay? Um, Awesome, awesome. Here we go. So, what is coronavirus, COVID 19, right? First detected in 2019, and some people say it came from the wet markets. Okay, all right. Some people say that it came from a, a, a lab 30 minutes away from the wet market. We may never find out the exact cause, but many people say that COVID 19 is the longest lasting thing that was ever made in China. Um, so things are starting to open up now. Uh, they're starting to open up. You know, it was only until, you know, what was it, last week that I finally got a haircut. Let me just show you. This is what I looked like a week ago. This is exactly what I looked like. I finally went to the dentist. I went to the dentist. 
I'm not joking. Last week this time, this is what I looked like. This is it, you know. You know, thank goodness that our, <laughs> our dentist and our um, hairstylist opened up um, because we kind of want things to go back to normal. Okay, so who's at risk, right? Who's at risk? Older adults, people with asthma. A lot of us, we're in, you know, the healthcare. We have long-term care. We have memory care, people with dementia, um, you know, nursing homes, all of that, assisted living, independent living. You know, we got to be very, very careful because it often happens with people over the age of 65 and with underlying health concerns. We all know that. And that's all of our populations. Those are the people that we cater to um, on a daily basis. Food service challenge. Really? Is there any food service challenges that we have? Uh, where, where do I begin, right? Think about it. Think about it. We can't hop on a Zoom call in the morning, right, and work from home. We can't work with our fuzzy slippers on and our, um, and our yoga pants. And that's something you do not want to see. Um, yeah, we actually have to physically come to work and be present. Um, we're a people-centric business, right? We have a very tiny, we've got a small back in the house that we have to make the magic. We have a crowded front of the house. Um, think about it. We don't have Monday through Friday, nine to five jobs. You know, every day we're working, we have a different crew or a different staff member working. Um, sometimes we're working early in the morning, late at night. Uh, these are some of the challenges, you know, that we have. Uh, we're dealing with our residents who are cooped up into their rooms and um, sometimes they're demanding, they're demanding a lot from us. A and it's pretty brutal, pretty brutal on them too. So stop the spread. You know, there's no vaccine, there's no treatment, we know this. The best way to avoid it is to, you know, not get it in the first place. So, you know, it's, you know, how we, handle ourselves, how we handle our family, our friends, our coworkers from getting this virus. Okay, all right. Um, steps to avoid spreading this, right? If you have fever, cough, shortness of breath, symptoms may appear two to 14 days after exposure. A big thing is remember, um, you can be symptomatic, you know, and not show signs of this meaning you can make people sick, even though you're not showing any signs. Um, review your logistics. How, how, are, how are we using our space in the front of the house, back of the house? Think of our cooks, our wait staffs. Think of our customers that come and waiting to be seating, to waiting to be seated. If we have a bar, a lot of communities now have bars uh, and people can tend to congregate there. Um, these are all things that we need to think about and come up with a plan. Keeping our customers safe. Our customers, our residents, they're king. And you know, if you're like me, you have a very special connection with all your residents. Um, we gotta make sure that we're doing screening, that you know, no staff member is sick, but also no residents, no one coming into the dining room is sick. Um, we got to be mindful of the party size. Is it only going to be one person per table, two per table? Um, I'm going to talk a second, you know, on what we need to look up the National Restaurant Association. They have their guideline out for every state, what's expected. But keep in mind, we're high risk. We may need to, you know, tighten that up even further on what we're able to do. Fever, cough. Shortness of breath, short, sore throat. Um, remember, people that are asymptomatic, um, they can affect many, many people. This is our new normal, right? Face masks. Remember a couple of years ago when China had the Olympics down there, we saw all these people with a face mask on and we were going, wow, look at those people. Are they crazy? Who wants to wear a face mask all the time? Yeah, that day has come here. Yeah, we're all wearing face masks and, you know, in most places, you know, they're required. Um, we got to wear it when we're moving in and out of your table. 
You got to wear it if you get up from your table and use the restroom. You got to wear it with if you're within six feet of others. Um, you can leave it off as long as you're you know eating or if you're chit chatting at the table. But once you get up from that table, you got to pop it back on. Okay. All right. We're going to be opening. Right. Uh, I had one person tell me, one CDM tell me, this is crazy. We're not opening. Okay. I'm, I'm not telling you to reopen. All this is is a guide uh, on how to move forward, things to think about, a plan, a plan and process for when we do reopen. You know, we have some, you know, thought put by, behind it where we're, where, we are, where we're able to open up and open up successfully. You know, we're going to talk about spreading out the tables, right? The number of people per table. And if you're going to be doing turnover, turning tables. Think about social distancing ideas, right? But don't just keep it to yourself. Talk to your staff about it. Talk to your front of house. Talk to your talk to your back of, back of the house. What I find is oftentimes there are key players that are on your staff that come up with awesome ideas. Um, and they should be implemented if it makes sense for your operation. Um, if you have outside seating, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, uh, just different things we need to do, uh, you know, within our realm to make sure that what we're doing makes sense. It's in compliance, it's within the law, and, um, you know, we're able to keep everyone safe. Um, it might even be a thing too, when we do wind up reopening, you know, family, friends, you know, guests, right? They, they don't come in. And then when we do eventually wind up allowing them to come in that we have their contact information. we got to have everyone's contact information because in the event something happens, it's our obligation. We have to have that record and we have to be able to contact those people too uh, to let them know, you know, what's going on. Okay. All right. This is a blueprint, a blueprint, you know, um, think about it. The building that you're in right now was completely built with the roofing material and the concrete and, and all the furnishings and the cinder blocks. It was completely built before the shovel hit the ground. Um, I call it a blueprint. And a blueprint is just a plan, a plan of action, where you start from and where you're going, what, what goals there are that need to get done and what needs to get accomplished. Um, with your, you know, your aces in the hole, your, your supervisors, your chef, get everyone involved because um, between your core group, between the people that are the leaders in your operation, you have the answer. So what goes on the table? Silverware, napkins, glasses, menus, bread baskets, nothing that can be touched by other diners can be on the, be on the, on the table. So think about it. That means it's going to be disposable, disposable plates, disposable silverware, napkins. Napkins are, are going to be disposable also. No cloth tablecloths, no cloth napkins. Um, glasses, we're going to use the you know, clear plastic cups. Menus, we're either going to use a menu board or that we can carry from you know, table to table, or we're going to give them, you know, menus that are printed out on a regular sheet of paper, after they touch it, they're gonna get thrown away. Um, our copy costs are gonna go through the roof, just no different th than the way our, you know, disposable costs, you know, are un unheard of right now. We can't even get certain things right now. Someone asked me about, you know, um, the residents like the black plastic uh, knives because they cut better. Like well, did a little research, you know what I found out? Um, that company in the Midwest that has the black plastic knives, they had a resident, they had a, a, um, a, a worker, one of the employees had COVID. So did you know they had to shut down for five days, completely sanitize, disinfect, you know, this short of sterilizing that place. Because think about it, someone that's affected and they're doing packaged silverware, those silver, that silverware, the plastic silverware, disposable silverware is going out to thousands and thousands of people running the risk of possibly infecting them also. So you need, you see why they need to get shut down. And with that, with that plant shut down, that means that we're, we're getting anything we can get at this point. Um, hey, uh, Chef Robert, uh, yes, Robert, go ahead. 
Hey, um, yes. on that topic, uh, we had a question come in from the audience that I, yeah. I think is relevant, and it'll also sort of open the door for more questions to come in. But uh, Chris Please. Waters asks, just curious, why not use linen tablecloths or napkins since residents are the only ones using it? And why not use regular silverware if you're washing them after each time? Excellent uh, question, Chris. Um, you, you certainly can. But let me ask you this, are you increasing the risk? Um, this is what you need to do. And I'm gonna talk about this later. Um, you know, I'm gonna address it towards the end, Steve, on um, really the key things we need to do. Um, would that be okay if I do that? Can we just hold on, hold off on that? Absolutely. And, and I'll address that at the end. But, but yeah, really what it comes to... down to, really what it comes down to is, uh, number one, um, you know, uh, Right now, uh, I know a lot of you. I was. I, I looked at the. I looked at the roster. A lot from the Midwest. Um, quite a few people from Michigan, um, Ohio. You know, we're in. We're in the Washington D.C. area. You know, maybe you didn't know that when you when you um, signed on up. You know, Maryland, uh, D.C., Virginia. Uh, just to give you a clue, um, Chesapeake Bay, Old Bay goes on everything. Uh, so anyway, that's where we're located, and I'm following the guidelines uh, on what we're held to. Um, I'm working with a restaurant right now in Bethesda, and, and they are gung ho on um, they're gung ho on cloth tablecloths, but they have to come up with a HACCP plan on how they handle those tablecloths. And one of the plans is before you trade out that tablecloth, you've got to put on. Well, this is Bethesda, Maryland. Before you pull out that tablecloth for the next person, you got to put on a disposable apron. Uh, it has to be wrapped a certain way. It, it, you, you know, you're doing a whole pass of plan, and in some cases, um, you know, it's 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 very time. You know, it, it's labor intensive. Uh, everyone has to follow that plan. If you don't follow that plan, you're in, you're in a violation, and you can be shut down. So uh, you know, so just be very very careful. Um, and then I'm going to address it towards the, towards the end on kind of exactly what you need to do uh, moving forward with this. Uh, think about table tents, they're off the table. No more, uh, you know, ketchup, mustard, they're all in the little PCs. We may need to help the residents open up those PCs. Salt and pepper, yeah, little PCs, right? Because you don't want to use the, you know, Eiffel Tower, salt and pepper shakers, and then have another resident use it um, because that's promoting the, the whole spread on that. Excellent question. Um, keeping ourselves safe. <sighs> masks, you know, masks are here to stay. Um, steps to keeping our workplace safe, workplace safe, wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, right? Don't share phones, desks, utensils. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the second part. Clean and disinfect. Um, sanitizing is different than disinfecting. It's close, but you know, it's a bit of a different procedure. Use approved chemicals. Uh, that's a huge thing right now. Um, and report any, you know, health concerns. The main thing on this is, you know, your hand washing sinks, you know, you got to have them in the, in the food prep areas, service areas, dishwashing areas, you know, outside of a restroom or inside the restroom. Um, you know, the shelf that's above the hand washing sink, keep an extra paper towel, keep an extra hand soap, train each employee how to trade them out if they're taking a squirt of the hand soap and there's nothing left, train them how to trade it out so that thing's always filled. Nothing worse than not having hand soap in there because what happens then staff don't wash, they don't wash their hands. They just don't. Um, face masks and other personal protective equipment. Um, right, we've seen them, right? We love them. Uh, the metal wire above the, above the face mask, just make sure you pinch it. Make sure you pinch it um, to, to keep that extra, you know, uh, bit of, you know, you know, aerosol possibly getting out. Remember, it enters the, the mucous membrane, uh, this whole COVID thing. So, so the mucous membrane, that's the mouth, that's the nose, that's the eyes. It can be the ears if you point, put your finger in far enough, but, you know, that's how it enters. And we try to, you know, control that, you know, close that up. 
Um, we've seen many creative things. You know, God bless these people. This is awesome. But if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to have the Nutella one. Um, but, um, you know, think about it. Uh, you know, we have to be in compliance, and that's what we do. Um, if you want a good sampling of what not to do, just, you know, spend 20 minutes in, you know, any Walmart. Um, spreading, <laughs> prevent the spread, right? Stay at home. Uh, that's a whole nother issue that we have in food service on, you know, some staff, they take advantage of that. Uh, but we certainly don't want anyone coming to work that is sick. Um, notify your supervisor, avoid public transportation, you know, who takes the metro, who takes the public bus right um separate from yourself from others in your home monitor symptoms right remember we got to be three days without symptoms without medication you know oftentimes in our area we got to be symptom free for um for two weeks and what that means is once you're symptom free so you got to take two tests and they both have to come up negative both tests have to be done within a 24-hour period and if they're both negative then you start the um the 14 days, right? Okay, cleaning, cleaning details. Uh, let's talk about that. That's our that's our SDS book, right? That's our right to know, right? Ugh. That's our you know safety data sheets is so important. Does your staff know where it is? Uh, does your staff know how to handle that? Uh, because think about chemicals. Chemicals are great. But they have to be they have to be used correctly. Every chemical in your that you use in your facility, you have to have a safety data sheet. Safety data sheet not only gives uh, first aid information if you were to injure yourself using that, but it also gives you a list of personal protective equipment we need to use when handling that chemical. Clean, sanitize, disinfect. Right? It's all about having a plan. Um, it's all about having that plan uh make sure you have a checklist make sure your staff is cleaning disinfecting sanitizing come up with a plan with who needs to clean what needs to be clean how frequently how frequently it needs to be cleaned, and who is going to double check each person to make sure they're cleaning correctly right the green bucket is for detergent the red bucket is for sanitizer make sure that you keep a cleaning rag inside that sanitizer. Make sure that who's ever using that sanitizer and they get that cleaning rag really dirty, not to put it back in the sanitizer, you know, put it in the laundry bin, laundry bin put it in the hamper and put a clean, you know, sanitizing rag in there. Um, it's just, you know, all things that we need to do um, to avoid, you know, giving one of our residents, giving one of our you know, uh, staff members, a, uh, you know, uh, you know, having issues with, you know, you know, chemical contamination or chemical poisoning with that. Uh, work with a good, reputable, you know, chemical company um, and make sure every chemical that you're using is an approved cleaner. Now, when we're sanitizing, when we're disinfecting fabrics, when we're disinfecting tabletops, tabletops take five to 10 minutes to properly disinfect. Uh, fabric could take up to 15 minutes. Just keep that in mind when you're, you know, when you're preparing your dining room, or if you're doing two seatings in your dining room, to make sure you have that time, you know, between seatings to make sure everything is disinfected, to make sure everything is sanitized. Um, Tablecloths, right? We talked a little bit about that. Cloth napkins. Uh, you've got to come up with a plan if you want to continue using that. Um, Chemicals, just make sure if you're, you know, if you're spraying them, that you have control of the spray, that the chemical isn't going all over the place. Emphasis on hand washing. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. We're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, you know, hand washing. Um, you know, it's so important. You know, we need to know when to wash our hands. You know, we need to know the proper steps for, you know, for hand washing. Um, and uh, we need to hold our staff accountable to how to properly wash their hands. Frequently asked questions. Okay, um, here we go. Can you get COVID-19 from food? Okay, so far no cases are seen from meat or other foods. No cases are from imported foods. When they had that whole thing with, you know, when it happened in Italy, I was, you know, 
and I heard that you I could still have my prosciutto. I was I was good. I was happy about that. Right? No cases coming from food packaging. Um, and basic food safety steps are still essential. You know, we never want to forget them. You know, anyway, does my diet affect my immune system? Right? A poor diet. Think about it. A poor diet leaves leaves us, uh, you know, at risk. Right? Our immune system's down. Not enough sleep, certainly. Alcohol, Zach, I think we're talking about you there. Smoking, right? Uh, that all affects us. High fiber foods, um, extra attention, right? For foodborne illness, right? Food safety is still so important and we need to hold our staff accountable for that. Um, excellent, stay calm, don't stress. Wash your fruits and vegetables, practice meditation. <laughs> especially to my CDMs out there, right? Practice meditation, uh, take vitamins and you know, probiotics daily. Exercise, exercise. My exercise is putting away the food order. My exercise is lifting those 50 pound bags of carrots, right? Putting them away, drink plenty of water, eat healthy, avoid alcohol, cigarettes, right? And uh, get enough sleep. Um, okay, awesome. Let's talk about, um, you know, we're gonna reopen our dining room. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about this. So any good talk, any good speech, right? You got your what's, right? What, what's it all about? You have your so what, and now you have your now what. So let's kind of kind of go over all this. Okay, awesome, fantastic. Certified dietary managers, dietary directors, food and beverage directors, you know, um, uh, culinary service, whatever we call ourselves. Right, we do the same job, but we have different titles. Um, this is how we say we feel, right? Hey, how's it going? We feel great, man. Everything's fantastic. You know, this is how we say we feel. You ask us, this is what we say, right? But mm, uh, yeah, this is actually how we really feel. Let me tell you something we are exhausted, we are exhausted. Um, I don't know how else to say this. Uh, so th this is the activity director running through. Okay, here's the dietary director right here. Oh no, what happened? Oh, the breakfast cook just called out sick. Oh, oh, oh the walk-in freezer is down. Here comes your marketing director. Runs right past you, not even a helping hand. Oh, come on. Oh, what happened here? Mrs. McGillicuddy said her French fries are cold when they were delivery, when they were delivered, and uh, no ketchup was in the tray. Oh, are we gonna make it to the end of the week? Oh, that's right. There is no end of the week because we are open seven days a week. We have three meals a day. And when anything happens, we got to step up and come in. Um, that's us. That is your certified dietary manager. That is your culinary director. Okay. We are not out of the woods. I want to introduce you to someone very special, Chef James Elmore. Uh, that's in here. You see him? That's Chef James Elmore. You know him, you love him, great guy, awesome chef. He's what I call a chef's chef. What's a chef's chef? What's a chef's chef, you ask? Let me tell you what a chef's chef is. A chef's chef is someone, you know when you're leaving the restaurant, it's 10 o'clock at night, you're, you know, you're, you're not going home. You know, you, you can't go to sleep, right? You're too pumped up because you had an awesome day. Um, and you look at each other and you, so, and you say, you know, where do you want to go? Let's go to Chef James Place. As a matter of fact, from 11 o'clock on, Chef James Place, over half the people there are in the hospitality field, right? That's what I mean when, you know, this man, I say, is a chef's chef. Yeah. You see that? Look at that. Um said to myself, I'm not going to get choked up about this, but um, he got it. He doesn't know exactly where he got it. Uh, he speculates. He has an idea, but he doesn't know exactly pinpoint how he got it. As a matter of fact, um, when he was in the ICU, the charge nurse comes around and she says to James, uh, excuse me, Mr. Elmore, um, did you want to talk to the hospital attorney? and get your last will and testament done. What's that tell you? Yeah, this is serious. Uh, you know, he not only had death knocking on his door, death had a battery ram and was gonna ram his door in. Um, and um, not this guy, 
I just remember thinking when that happened, you know, um, James, I was not ready to go to your funeral. Um, the culinary field was not ready to lose this chef. I just remember thinking all of that. Um, the chef James grabbed COVID by the neck, stared in its eye and spit in its face. Uh, I know you're back. I know you're back home now for a couple of days. I'm glad you're doing better. Rock on. But the lesson to be learned is don't take it for granted. We're going to talk about staff in a second and what we expect from them. It's bad. Let me tell you, you know, it's bad. States like Michigan, states like North Carolina. Let me tell you how bad it is in the state of Michigan. Michigan is, whoops. Oh, no. Did I lose you? Did I lose you? Steve, did I? No. Steve, did I? Oh, I lost you. I, you didn't lose me. Okay. Michigan's so bad. Michigan is so bad right now that someone this last weekend, you can look it up. Look it up. It's in the newsreel. Someone from last weekend was in the backwoods and they caught a glimpse. Hold on one second. Oh, right. In Michigan, right? This last weekend um, in the backwoods, they caught a glimpse of Bigfoot wearing a face mask. That's how bad it is. Even Sasquatch is saying, you know what? I'm not taking any chances. I'm putting a face mask on. Um, so think about it. Um, who would have thought 2020 this would have come? You know what? I got to tell you, not one Dr. Phil show, not one Long Island <laughs> medium, anyone said, hey, guys out there, listen to me, uh, listen to me, uh, 2020, you know, put your seatbelts on. You're going to go for a roller coaster ride. Um, no one said anything. Uh, but, you know, here we are today, and, you know, we didn't have a clue. Dietary directors out there, I know you are. You're giving me your thumbs up. How was your vacation last spring? Are these the photos of your vacation? Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, everything got put on hold. And uh, hey, um, with staffing issues. Yes. Hey, Robert. Um, yes. We got another good question in here. I know Excellent. you're going to jump into um, to, you know, the plan, but but this might give you some uh, thoughts on that. Uh, Joshua says, uh, what do we do if we can, if we cannot socially distance the residents? Our dining room was built to hold the amount of residents that we have. We okay, can awesome. 100, awesome. but we have 90 here now. Should we continue with the dining room being closed and delivering meals until we get to a place where we no longer will have to socially distance? Yeah. Yeah, um, there's a couple things that are just here to stay. And I'm gonna brush upon this in the next couple slides. Social distancing, that's here to stay. Face masks, that's here to stay. Taking the residents' temperature when they come down to the dining room, that's just gonna be, um, you know, SOP, standard operating procedures. And, um, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. What I did with a community in Silver Spring, Maryland, and uh, a couple restaurants, uh, in the area, in the area of Washington, D.C. Um, so hang tight. I'm going to be answering your question on that. Um, when are we going to open up? You know, you know, when are we going to open up? When is that day going to be? So I speculate in healthcare. Once a regular restaurants, regular restaurants are opening up, probably three weeks after that day. Now you're going to get family members calling saying all oh, the restaurants are open. How come you guys aren't open? How come you're keeping my mother? How come you're keeping my friend locked in a room? Because we're, we're healthcare and we have to be mindful of that. We got to, you know, what's the average age in our, in our communities, 82 years old. It's an 82 year old woman is the, is the average age, an average person. And um, they're at very high risk. So we just have to do it methodically. We got to be smart about it. And, um, um, we got to do it the right way. Uh, hang tight. I'm coming up to your, to your answer on maybe some things, maybe some ideas on what you need to do. Don't forget, um, you can always email me, Chef Robert at foodsafetychef.com, F-O-O-D-S-A-F-E-T-Y-C-H-E-F.com. Um, you know, if you have other questions or you don't want to ask in this forum. We'll send it out to everybody. Yeah, we'll send your you contact know. out okay, to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Thank you, Steve. 
Thank you. But think about think about our residents. You know, they're cooped up in the room. They're getting three meals a day in the room. A, a lot of them are going stir crazy. They're going kind of crazy being out there. Think about being locked in your room for that long. Nobody can come and visit you. Um, a lot of our residents in this area, they're seeing healthcare professionals. They're seeing um, uh, case workers, social workers to come and talk to them to help them get over, you know, this cabin fever. Um, the problem is, as I see it, I saw, I saw a social worker come in and, um, you know, uh, you know, it's scary enough with the COVID and it's scary enough with everything that's going on. Um, but here comes a social worker into a community. She's all decked up in this, you know, hazmat gear. And I totally understand why, but this is freaking out the residents when they show up. It looks like, you know, the guy from Bake Breaking Bad that just got finished stirring up a batch of meth is what these people look like, but they gotta keep themselves safe there, you know, don't wanna be at risk for themselves or even the residents. But um, sometimes it's kind of scary. So let's get ready. The best thing I can say is we can't wing it. It's got to be a written plan. It's got to be methodically thought out. Um, the dining room has got to be closed to anyone that has symptoms. A lot of times it's, you know, how we sell things to the resident. You know, um, in a restaurant, when you come on in and you sit down, there's a sheet of paper telling you what the expectations are in the restaurant. That's how we do it in the industry. Um, for our residents, it's the letter that they get, you know, a week ahead of time. They get slid underneath their door or brought into their, you know, room and put on the table. And it's usually written by the executive direct director with a, you know, with a, you know, line by line item on what's going to happen as far as the, um, as far as the reopen process. But the problem is they don't read it. They don't read it. They're coming down. They're confused. Uh, they want to know what's going on. That's why, you know, we have to have this plan in, in place. Maybe you have open dining where people just coming in and grab a seat. Maybe this is something where you think you need, you need to think about having a hostess there that's kind of, you know, number one, keeping the people social distancing. Number two, you know, you know seating them at, a, uh, at an appropriate table. Um, and um, we talked about, you know, you, know, you mentioned that about the, you know, the table, number of tables in the dining room, and I'm coming up to that. The success is going to be, you know, how well we sell this to the resident, to the residents. If we're panicking, they're going to panic. If we stay calm and, you know, thought out, they'll stay calm and, you know, we'll go along with us. Got to educate the staff too. You know, the staff kind of understands, but they still want the rotating weekends off and don't mess with my schedule kind of thing. Um, they got to understand, um, this is something where maybe you have someone designated that does, you know, daily check-ins. One of the things we're checking in with is, you were off yesterday, what did you do? We need to know that. Uh, when, they, when, when they come in, we're taking their temperature. Um, these are all things that we need to think about. If we're in closed space, how do we handle that? I'm coming up to that in a second. Seating, seating, um, seating, seating in the dining room. So um, maybe think about this. Um, you know, don't send me hate mail. These are just suggestions. You have lunch from 12 to two, anyone comes and goes as they please. Maybe, maybe we have to do two seatings where the first seating is 11.30 to 12.15. You do a complete deep clean sanitized disinfect from 12.15 to 12.30. 12.30, you open up to the second seating from 12.30 to 1.15. If you have any campers, meaning that residents that like to hang out, have them sit at the, sit at the, setting, at the second seating. I've seen it done successfully. It's a little confusing at first because nobody can remember who's first seating and who's second seating. So there's a little bit of that, um, a little bit of that confusion. But this is where the caregivers come in. This is where, don't let your DON tell you Oh, well, this is dining. This is, you know, this is your pickle. No, this is where I need your presence. And you need to, you know, talk to your staff, you know, because it's a combined effort, how we make this, 
how we make this work. I, I'm, I'm looking at you right now, and you're telling me, oh, yeah, try to talk to my DON. You know, she's difficult to talk to. Well, uh, I feel your pain, but you got to broach it. you got to bring it up because this has got to go off successfully. Plus, if there's bumps in the road, um, we need to know how to address them and how, it, how to address them across the, you know, the management team. Um, think about it too, if you do two seatings, uh, we change aprons. We whip out the old apron and uh, put on a new apron. These are all things that, you know, working with staff, working with communities that, you know, that, that I kind of picked up on. Hey, tables, um, tables. Robert? Yes, Steve. Um, yes. We're, we're at about 10 to one, and I know some people oh, sure. tend to jump. We can go beyond that, but I know some people tend to jump off at yep. one. So I, I'm intrigued by what you're, you're bringing up with the seatings. Yes. Um, can you share sort of a hypothetical and maybe like use the example yeah. of, and, and, and you know, I, I don't think anybody on this call would say that multiple seatings is um, not something that's desired because right now everybody is, is in their apartment sure. eating alone. Yeah. So coming up with the shift is, I, I look at that as the only solution, but in the example of that, um, of the uh, senior living community that has uh, 90 residents and a dining room that can seat 100, what, how, how would you approach uh, a, a yeah, excellent. like so, that? Yeah, yeah, so let's talk about that. Um, the problem is more than likely when you open up, um, you're only going to be allowed to have one person per table. So while your dining room sits 90, how many tables do you have? How many tables are in your bistro? Um, you may be confined to just that. Okay. Um, so you can see where that double, you know, for the two seatings, you know, might be something that's, you know, really important. And, and we're going to talk about, you know, you know, the tables and then the seating arrangements and, and even the flow of the kitchen. Um, and you need to be mindful too, if you have way too many tables that aren't six feet apart, you've got to get rid of those tables in the dining room. Uh, one community, they actually got a storage space, an extra uh, space storage space to put those tables because if they're there, people are going to want to sit there. And, and, and you know, you're too close to the other residents. So hey, these uh, are all things that- Robert? Yes, Steve. Um, Yes. Whether it be in a um, in a senior living community or a restaurant that you've worked with, are you fam are yes. you familiar? Debbie Luddington asks, are you familiar with the uh, plexiglass dividers on tables? Have you seen any places using those? Yeah, yeah, I have, and I'm actually working with a lot of. Ha <laughs> ha, Steve, right here is the next slide. I I've seen a lot of creative things. That's a shower curtain. You um, know, I've seen the plexiglass. I've seen actually, the your slides. Things. Your, your slides are stalled. Um, oh, oh, we're no. still looking at um, we're still looking at oh, the, no. the Michigan oh, slide. There you go. Oh okay. no! Let me, let me come back here. Let me go. Uh, slideshow. In current slide. Okay. okay. Are we, are, do you see a, a dining yeah. room right now? Yeah. So now okay. click on the one to the right. Click, click on click. the one to the right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm showing all the slides right now. But okay. uh, um, you, you kind of get the point, right? Can, can you see that with the shower curtain? Yeah. Can you see that with, with the plexiglass? Okay, yep. good, good. So, so these are all things that are that places are working. Like the RW Restaurant Group in, in Washington, D.C., they bought a ton of plexiglass. What's nice about the see-through is it just kind of makes it feel opened up a little bit versus, you know, the, the colored ones or or the other ones that just kind of feel closed in too on that. You know, think about your flow in the dining room, right? You know, how you're flowing through the dining room. Where you enter may not be the same place that you exit. You know, where you have like a one-way effect through the dining room. So, you know, it avoids people, you know, clustering up together. Um, outside seating, if you have the outside seating, it's great. Be mindful of the weather. Be mindful of the, you know, the temperature, uh, humidity, rain, wind. But if you have that as an option, it, it, it's great. Staff hygiene. Staff hygiene 
you know, we need to be very, you know, mindful of that. You know, we need to screen the staff, right? Fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath. Um, here, this is a picture here of a weekend. Uh, they lifted it in North, in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. Crazy. Tons of people got it. And now they're bringing it home to their family. They're bringing it home to, um, uh, to their community. Uh, they're putting their residents at risk. There's nothing wrong with asking your staff, you know, where were you this weekend? Tell me about it. Uh, were you congregating with, you know, just a, you know, a mass of people? Um, because think about it, you know, that can, that one person can wipe out a staff and can affect many, you know, many different residents. Cell yeah. phones, cell phones is another thing, you know, you know, talk about cell phones, you know. Hold on, wait a second. Let me whip this up. <laughs> hello, hello. Cell phones, right? Our cell phones, people touch their cell phones. Everyone has one. The rule of thumb with cell phones is you touch your cell phone, you got to get in there at the hand washing station, you know, wash your, sta wash your hands. Staff uniforms. I want you to think about this and think about it closely because this is coming up. This is like a hot point with the health department right now. How many staff uniforms are you giving them? Are they washing it themselves? Are you giving them two uniforms and they only wash two, you know, they work five days a week and they only do the laundry once, you know, once a week. Are, are they putting their uniform on at home and coming to work? These are all things that we need to think about as far as staff uniforms and how they're being used and, you know, how they can put us at risk. Hand washing, do I need to go over all the different hand washing? You know, I think I'm hand washing, yeah. I'm done to, you know, I'm, you know, um, if I hear one more thing about hand washing, you know, I think I'm going to scream. Gloves, gloves is the other thing, right? These are the most, this is right here, this right here, our hands make most people sick. Gloved hands make almost just as many people sick because they have this false sense of security thinking that everything is clean. No, be mindful of your staff who likes to wear gloves. Once they become contaminated, we take our gloves off, wash our hands, and put a new set of gloves on. Our hostess stand right. Our hostess got to take the. They have to take the temperature. They're they're running the whole um, tempo of the dining room, right? We need to make sure that people are social distancing. That they're you know that they're staying six feet apart when you know when they're coming up to be seated. That that person is seating in in a good flow fashion, right? Taking temperatures. We've all seen this. Masks, right? Residents that need to wear the masks. Others, you know, us that need to wear our mask, right? We've all seen that, you know, that video of the amount of bacteria between the two. See, I wear this one anytime I need it. You know, I just pop it on like that. You know, when I don't need it, I just pull it down and it acts, you know, it doubles up as an ascot, right? So with my smoking jacket, I'm good to go. In my velour bathrobe, right? Like Hugh Hefner, I'm rocking, I'm good to go. Um, face masks, right? Right? Um, that person is wearing a, you know, a proper face mask, but you have those that have the nose out, the, you know, they won't wear a face mask unless it's fashionable, right? The paranoid one, um, the masked earring guy. I love that guy with the face mask dangling from the ear. Um, Mr. DYI, you know, just make sure that your staff is wearing a face mask and wearing it properly. Again, uh, over the nose there, make sure you pinch it. Servers, we love them. Um, Still smile when you speak, right? You can see a smile through the through the face mask. Cleaning, disinfecting, sanitizing. I think we talked about that enough. Watch where the residents touch. They touch underneath the tables too. Make sure that's you know clean and sanitized, disinfected, right? Serving food, make sure the food is covered with a, either a plate cover or a piece of plastic wrap, plastic wrap when you're bringing it out. Um, Self-service buffets, keep them stocked. Residents love watching them, but they have to be roped out and only the service staff, only the servers can go over there and, and uh, serve your item from the self-service. Action stations, action stations are great. Aromatherapy, um, you know, it gives the residents a thrill, all of that. This is how we do our flambe. There's our flambe right there, that's awesome. Good deal. Um, kitchen staff, right? The only thing I have to say about the kitchen staff, 
if you're within six feet, wear the face mask. The other thing too, and this is this is kind of a big hot topic. If they're working the line, don't grab things from the from the line with a hand or a gloved hand. Everything, including French fries, everything you have to grab with a serving utensil, with a tongue, with a spoodle, with a scoop. Right? We're not touching food with our bare hands. Keep it, keep everything you know six feet apart. A cleaning and sanitizing. Make sure that your three compartment sink is properly set up. Um, everyone knows how to set up a three compartment sink. Make sure the sanitizer is at that correct concentration, ppm parts per million. Um, check it with a with the test strip. Management, management. Um, okay, so you know I'm part of the, you know, um, you know, I'm part. You know, I'm a. You know, ANFP hey, hey Robert, I, I know I'm yes, going to interrupt yes. an, another great joke yeah. here, but uh, it, yes. it's after one, and I really want to yes. make sure that we we give folks the opportunity to ask questions. Um, yeah, you you you, you have me. I apologize uh, for going long. Um, we're we're just about done. I got two more slides. Okay. Um, so I just here's a shout out to my general managers out there and executive directors. We need your support. We need you to be there. The first day we open up, we need you there, 7.30 in the morning, 7.30 in the morning to greet our residents, to kind of give them a, a show through of, what, um, of what's expected and, and what we're doing now. Um, we, just need your, we just need your assistance. We need your help with that. The number one complaint from certified dietary managers from, from us is we don't have enough support with you sometimes. Okay, I said it. Uh, we won't tell you but I'm just kind of telling you how we feel. And in things like this, crucial times like this, it's only one time you gotta wake up a little bit earlier, but uh, work with us on this, we need your support, um, right? We're doing all of this. This is so important. Um, it comes down to us as the dining service director to make sure this goes off without a hitch. Going back to the previous question, two of them, both of them, draw out a plan, um, contact your health department, tell your, health department survey or what you're doing, show them your plan of action. Um, and, um, you know, you know, no doubt, they're gonna use your plan of action and judge it against other, other communities. But get their input, tell them, what you're, tell them what you're doing, they'll, you know, give you good insight. They'll tell you, well, no, you, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that. Okay, um, what did we learn today? What did we learn today? Um, so let me ask you, what is this? What is this? Do you know what this is? A um, couple people. Oh, Leslie, Leslie, you said it was a martini. A martini. Okay, I got you. You're the first one to answer that. Wrong. Wrong. This is not a martini. What is it? What is it? Oh, Chris from Ashburn. What did you say it was? It is a quarantini. Excellent. Enjoy. Sorry, I ran over, guys. I know I talk too much. Um, we are open for business. Um, okay. Please hit me with your questions. I'm sorry right. I had to rush through the end, but. Well, yeah. So the, I got a couple, I, I got a couple of things and folks, I, I, if you've got questions, raise your hand. I see Beverly's got her hand raised. I'll call on her in a moment. But what, what are we looking at? This is a good indication of a general manager, uh, concern is what are we looking at in terms of additional cost to properly run uh, the dining services in a restaurant or in a senior living community? Because like a lot of the things that, that you're mentioning are going to are gonna be expenses um, and you're not going to be able to have as many people in the dining room. That's one thing that I wanted to get your feedback on. The other thing is I I believe you're at a senior living community right now. I'm just curious, is the dining room open there? And what, what does the plan look like in that community? Yeah, so um, just so I'm clear, you know, uh, I, I work for myself. Um, it, I do consulting. I do a lot of consulting for other, for other communities. Other communities are open. And we did open after three weeks after the general population their restaurants were open and we came up with a plan and um and it's one of those things where we're constantly tweaking with this plan you know what let me tell you something 
Yeah, it's a lot of expensive. It's very expensive. And what drives me crazy is, you know, our um, our paper goods cost went skyrocketing through the roof. And they're okay with it. But then they're coming to you saying, well, your paper costs are through the roof. You know, what are you going to do, chef? You know, you got to come up with a plan. You know what? We're in the we're in the market for the betterment of people, you know, and sometimes in life costs go up and there's really not much we can do about it. So sometimes I need general managers to kind of have our back on this. You know, uh, I need corporate to understand that. I understand that, you know, there's investors, but, um, and you know, they, you know, no, no, I was just for uh, whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. Every department is, uh, is, is getting hit. And, um, yeah. Let's see. Let me. Um, Beverly's got her hand raised, so I'm gonna. Uh, um, I'm. I'm gonna bring her. We've also. Uh, Beverly. Hey, Beverly. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hi I can hear you. Hi. I'm just wondering. Uh, you said there's a lot of uh, places that are open in senior residents. How many? Um, senior residents have actual staff on hand in their offices versus a, what one place I know has a security guard at the front door and the, uh, the staff have Zoom meetings but never come to the building and uh, occasionally call, rotating call a resident to see how they're doing. Is this the norm? I mean, is eating in the dining room the norm, or is no, it's delivered not. food no, the it's norm? Not. Yeah, yeah. So, so kind of what is happening on is with states that are starting to reopen. Now, some states they are not even close to being at that stage yet, but places that are, um, you know, started to reopen, um, they're starting slow. They're starting with one person per table. They're starting with that, you know, um, you know, you, you got to be careful with the security guard because you know you don't want to make it intimidating for a resident, especially if they're in AL or assisted living. Uh, you, you know, you want to have a you know a host up there that's able to control that crowd. You know, you're able to control them, so you are in compliance with social distancing. You are making sure that they're wearing a face mask when they're you know, going to the table or getting up to use the restroom. You want that bit of control. Um, you know, everything is still disposable. You know, we're using disposable napkins, disposable utensils, disposable plates. Uh, and it's just, just a well thought out uh, process, you know, where we're able to, you know, do this for our residents. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of extra steps our staff have to do but our residents are worth it and, and we want to make sure we do it for them, but we got to be smart about it and do it the right way. Hey, um, so yes. in the senior living communities that you've consulted with, you know, um, I, I totally understand it, if, if restaurants are open in that state, you, you know, taking the precautions, delaying, and, and I like the idea of one person per table and having them spaced apart. Um, but my my un, my thought is is that in a, a typical senior living community, probably uh, quite a few residents would continue to want to stay in their room and not yes. take the risk to go down to the dining room. So does it automatically kind of default where the dining room is not going to be at capacity because a lot of the residents yeah. are not going to risk that for quite some time? Excellent, Steve. And your facility, excuse me, community might have a, might have a rule in place that if they go outside, if a resident goes outside the building for any reason, when they come back, you know, whether they go out for a doctor's appointment, what have you, that they come back and they have to self quarantine for 72 hours. So that's right. You're always going to have your residents that um, are going to want to stay in your in their room. But what I found, Steve, is most want to come down. Most of they're able to, they want that human connection again. They want that, you know, FaceTime. They want to come down and, you know, talk to me and, you know, 
give me their comments and that sort of thing. And, and I'm all ears and I, and I want to listen to them. Great. Well, this has been really thought provoking. Um, I, I mean, I, you're right. You know, dining services as well as healthcare staff, it's 24 seven in most of our communities. And, um, you know, reiterating a well thought out plan, you know, not taking, you know, uh, putting some luxuries like cloth napkins and, and nice silverware on the back burner to get us through um, these challenges make a lot of sense. And uh, someone had mentioned that there's a worldwide shortage on plexiglass due to all of this, but, you know, some of those scenarios there can just ensure that that our residents are a little bit more safe. Um, I recorded this today, so I'll be able to share that with everybody. I'll be able to share Chef Robert's um, uh, contact info. Uh, Chef, if you can email me your PowerPoint, I'll share that with I folks because it, it stalled yes. out at one point. But um, absolutely. But I'm really, you know, uh, thrilled that you gave us the time that we got through the technical difficulties and you got us, you know, thinking about some stuff. But um, but it looks like, you know, this is this is one step towards residents being able to engage in a um, in a communal environment in a safe way uh, in the future. You know, and it's it's just a plan. It's just some things to think about so it goes off successfully. All right, you know, great. So th thank you for um, having me here, Steve. Okay, we'll be talking to everybody soon. Thanks. Excellent.